hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of Terraria Explorer Tales. So since last episode, I've been working on a few things, I have a couple things to go over. I mainly was just trying to get a bit re-familiarized with Terraria because like I mentioned in the previous episode, it's been a long time since I played and I kind of forgot how to play a bit, but it came back pretty quickly. So the main thing to know is, one, I changed the light setting from, uh, actually if I just go to settings I can show you. It's now on color, it was on white. And if I actually just flick it, uh, white just makes it, well, white, but if I go back to color, I don't know, adds a bit more, well, color, like the fire here is purple instead of just being white. So I don't know, I don't know why I didn't have it set on color, perhaps that wasn't a setting when I originally did it or I just didn't think to change it. Because I do know there are some new options that weren't here when I originally started playing Terraria for the Let's Play which was the first time I played it. So, I don't know, but I might uh, tweak around some of those settings as needed. Also remember to turn off this little highlight because it turns on when I start recording due to the key bind. Another thing to note is, uh, I'm not gonna mess around with this too much now, but there are these sliders. I think zoom might have been a thing before, but mainly I could up the UI. So if the UI does seem a little too small in these videos, let me know, and at least for season two, hopefully I can resolve it. I'm not sure I want it like that big. Yeah, that's a little big, <laughs> like overlapping the map big, but you know, I could do something bigger than this if needed. Anyway, that's not what I really want to talk about for this whole episode. So the first thing you might notice is the base looks a little different. So when I first was uh, trying to play on this world just to get back into it, I was working on tweaking the base, you know, getting used to the building system again. And I don't know, I just uh, mainly expanded down here. This used to be a little cavey bit and I moved the barrel of gifts. And I also made another room here because, well, there was like, you couldn't actually get down to these bottom rooms. So I was just like, I opened up and I'm a third room. I'm sure we'll need in the future and move the trap door down as well. And... Uh, aside from that, I did do a bit of caving. I tried extending the rope down. I think like around here is where it left off. I extend it way down here. And I also have been doing some exploring about. But uh, yeah, uh, I have a few new upgrades to go over. The first is I do have a platinum pickaxe with a not so good modifier, but I got that because I figured I had a platinum axe. I don't know why I got a platinum axe. I don't even remember what the axe is used for. I think just cutting down trees. I don't know. But I got a platinum pickaxe now so I could mine some of the better stuff like meteorite and just mine a bit faster. And uh, I also had a silver chainmail. And I say had because if you look at my gear now, it's not that great. I put on the mining helmet just because I've been doing a lot of mining and I'm. it's annoying to always have to swap the torches. But uh, while I was uh, extending the rope down, it's actually when I got to, let me see, down here. So I was trying to, or not here, here. So there was a lot of lava and actually, no, I think it was down here. I don't know, it was down somewhere. Yeah, I think originally this pool was like up to here and this was a huge lake too that I moved down. But while I was draining this lake, uh, yeah, that, that'd be where I died. Uh, maybe I died there too. I don't know. I died a couple times, but the big time was down here I died because something knocked me into the lava as I was working on it. And yeah, I forgot to mention in the other episode, but this character isn't soft core like in the original Let's Play. Soft core is where you only drop gold. This one is medium core, which means when I die, I drop items or all my items and my gold. And the thing is, thankfully not everything burns up in lava. But uh, I think only non-magical or like special things burn up. I'm not sure how it works with like the name coloring or such, but uh, some stuff didn't burn up. But like all my armor, all the seeds I had as ammo for the blowpipe and a lot of that stuff burned up. So it was a pretty big setback. Like all my rope, I think all my torches, all the blocks I had on me, you know, a lot of the more mundane stuff. I think anything maybe with a white name. Because let's see, our seed's also a white name, and armor is a white name, unless it's like the mining house. Okay, so pretty much anything I had of a white name got burned up, it seems. Which was quite unfortunate. And uh, since then, I did a bit more mining to try and get my stuff, or get back to where I was. Because, you know, I just spent all that time trying to gear up armor so we had a little bit more strength to try and do some stuff like bosses, and then I just lost it. So that's what I've been doing over here on this cave section. I've been trying to explore and just mine ores. I was trying to go deeper, but I kept running into stuff that hurt a lot, so I decided to not go that deep, even though I think uh, you get better ores the deeper you go. 
But, uh, yeah, there's a few things I got, as you can probably see by my trinkets. So the first is I got an Enchanted Boomerang and a Band of Regeneration. And I think I got those before I died. But in my recent uh, caving, I got the Hermes Boots and a Magic Mirror. I also found Skeleton Merchant and got some Glow Sticks. But I don't think there's anything else of huge note I got. I think I did get the Quick Compass, but that's not something I'm really using that much. I already had the radar and the watch. And I also did pick up a piggy bank so I could take with me. Because I only had the one up here before. So yeah, that kind of catches up to where I am. But following that death, I want to get a bit better of gear. So I decided it's finally time to come over to this uh, Barrow Old Gifts. And see what I have in here. Because pretty much, I want to use the stuff from here a little more uh, generously now. Because I'm getting to the point where some of this stuff's going to become dated very quick. So if I don't use it now, I might not get to use it. Or I'm going to be past the point I can use it. So yeah, I'd like to try and start taking like all this stuff now. So let's see what we have. So we have the shark tooth necklace, which is a pretty good one. But I mainly am interested in the armor. Because like I said, my armor burned up. So I think I will be swapping on the ninja set. And uh, the set effect is thrown items not to be consumed. And let's see, compared to my current armor, my current armor has 12 and this has 16. So I don't think it's that absurd of a damage boost. And it gives uh, the increased thrown damage, crit strike and such. And I also would like to switch over to using thrown weapons now. Now, I might not use these right away. I do know I have some already of my own. Let's see what else we have. We have this pickaxe. And it's actually worse than my good pick or my pickaxe now. So that's a little disappointing. Although it does have 15% speed, but I think that might be attack and not mining. I'm not sure how it works, but I don't know. I'm going to at least take it now because it's either on par or past the point. Uh, hmm. The bone sword's still a bit strong. I actually switched back to the spear because I think with the damage boost and the higher crit chance, it would be better than the uh, trident I had. But I also would like to take the mana stars and the life crystals. Uh, hmm. I don't know, I think I might actually look over the rest of this off camera because I don't want to just be hemming and hauling this whole time like, oh, should I take this? I will take the boomerang just because mine only has knockback and this one has damage, so it's slightly better. Yeah, it actually says there. Oh, so the damage does actually reflect on the tooltips. I did not remember that, so I guess the, uh, the trident was better than this because I was applying, this has 9, I was figuring it was 9 plus 12%, but uh, that's not the case. But I am liking the boomerang as a weapon. Oh, uh, the ninja has a set effect that does that. A little weird. Okay, but yeah, the trident I have just is knocked back. But I think I will take that. And these can go in here. I also uh, added a few new chests about. Just because these are starting to get full. I probably will clear out some of the more junky items. But, uh, yeah. So actually, just give me a minute and I'm going to sort through stuff. Or sort through this barrel and see if there's anything else. And sort around my gear and then I'll come back. Well, while sorting out the stuff in the barrel, I realized that that clip was around 8 minutes, which is a lot longer than I wanted for an introduction to this video, but hopefully as this series goes on, I will be able to do shorter clips. It's just there was a lot to recap there, because it was like my first time getting back into playing Terraria. And also, I was going to do a clip after I died, but earlier today, before I got a chance to record that clip, I had some time when I was watching a stream, and I decided just to do some mining to try and get some more gear so we could be a bit more equipped. So that's why there's a little more progress than I wanted in that. Anyway, but I did upgrade my gear as you can see, and uh... Oh, I guess I should let that guy in. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, let me just uh, go over what I have on me, and then we'll go over what's in the barrel. So, I still have the ninja armor, of course, still have all the same trinkets. But uh, I ended up getting the mandible blade. It might be a little fast, because it is very fast, but, uh, yeah, so is the boomerang, though. Because I figured the boomerang has 14 damage, and it's very fast, so pretty much anything around that is on par now. And pretty much melee weapons are not... I mean, that's really fast, but melee weapons are not as good as ranged weapons in general, in my opinion. And I also got this, because this is more like uh, the spear and such I was using, the trident. So I figure that seems reasonable enough. It's 13 damage, the boomerang's 14, this is 14. And I also have shurikens. Now, these are actually from my chest, but I also did have throwing knives in there, which were a couple more damage. But I figured just as I'm getting into the thrown weapons with the ninja armor, I'll try shurikens just because they're a little weaker and more expendable. And also have the Demonic Vile Thorn, 
Now, it's a pretty cool and powerful weapon, but it's only 11 damage, which is good, but, uh... Yeah, it's not that great. I think Akatori had that in the original Let's Play. I shoveled some stuff around. I have the Hurtful Slime Staff, which summons a baby slime, which is awesome. So I have that if I, for, when I, for when I remember to use it. And the rest of the stuff is in here. So I have the Spike Balls, which are a huge damage boost at 17 damage. So I'm going to hold off on them. Uh, the Bone Sword at 16 melee, I felt was still a little too much, especially because it has increased size. The yo-yo probably is fine for now, but I decided just to hold off on yo-yos. Magic Missile at 24 is way too powerful. I decided to hold on of the shark necklace just because I don't want to... I think it's only melee damage. I'm not sure what damage the armor penetration applies to, but it's really powerful. I'm not using the yo-yo, so I didn't want to use that, and I don't want to spawn the King Slime in yet. So I think that kind of covers most of the gear stuff. But I actually want to do some actual clips besides just telling you what I did and then just showing you the gear upgrades in this episode. Because the main thing is, I want to get a bit stronger. I kind of just did that right now. I do have stuff in here to, like, make, uh, have some, uh, crim crimtain and some platinum and silver I've been trying to collect. So I have a decent amount of ores and I also sword the chest a bit since you last saw it probably. And, uh... But the main thing is, I want to try fighting a boss. Now, I realized, I found this while I was, uh, actually just before I started recording this episode when I was doing that caving after I died, I found this suspicious looking eye, which means we can spawn the boss. Awesome. But the thing is, uh, I realized it didn't spawn naturally because I didn't have enough health. You need 200 health for it to spawn. And the King Slime sign out there probably was because the event could still trigger. So I spawned it trying to fight it and then died. Or maybe use one of those. I'm not sure. So that's what I'd like to do now. So I have the Mana Crystals and a lot of Life Crystals. So I want to use them and then we can try fighting the boss. So let's see. I feel like... I always mess up which click it is. Okay, I feel like I can still get a bit more of that. But I'll hold off for the moment. And I have 20 life crystals. I feel like that's going to max out whatever my life can be for the moment. I'm not positive though. Okay, so now the boss can spawn. I think you can go to... Yeah, 400. And then once you get to hard mode, you can go higher, so... Yeah, that's not doing anything anymore. I wanted to see if I actually was draining it. Okay, so now I have the max life, which is going to make it a lot safer to do stuff, because I feel like part of the reason, one, I didn't have a huge or great armor rating, and also didn't have a, huge, a lot of damage to, like, you know, deal back to enemies, but I think my uh, lower life was a big problem, because, like, when I hit lava, it hit, like, 70-some damage, which was, like, two shouting me, so now I can take that and hopefully... You know, survive a few more lava hits, unless it's percentage-based, I'm not sure. Anyways, I'm gonna get a few more things ready, and I guess we can try finding the Eye of Cthulhu tonight. Okay, so I took a few more minutes to sort some stuff out. The main thing to note is I did swap out my lesser healing potions for healing potions, just because, for one, finding a boss, we might need the extra health. And I don't know where to fight the boss, really, so I'm just gonna fight it here. I know you'd want to be by a campfire, I actually just remembered that, but... Can't think of a huge reason we shouldn't do it at the house. So, uh... Here we go. Also, I probably should have practiced with these thrown weapons first. Because I have no idea the range on them. Oh, they have pretty good range. But I'm not expecting this to be terribly difficult. But then again, I only fought this guy in multiplayer. And... Well, I did fight solo in multiplayer a few times, but, you know, I haven't really fought him in a solo world like this, and I have no idea how appropriate my gear is for this guy, because when I did it before, I had a lot more uh, preparation and multiplayer, so... I don't know. It's going pretty well, though. I mean, honestly, I probably would have expected the fight to be over by now, but... uh. Although I'm using a lot of my shurikens. But they're dealing pretty good damage. And he's not dealing a lot of damage to me, so... I think I have a good enough armor that I can tank this, so... That's good at least. 
But one of the main reasons I do want to do this sooner than later is because now that I have the health, it would start spotting, and I would like to... Alright, since I fell on the eye at least, I'd rather it be that I control when it spawns so we can definitely get it in a clip, rather than, you know, it spawning randomly when I'm just trying to, you know, explore around or something, and then being awkward trying to record then, because sometimes it might be, you know... Or, since this is, uh, like, a Tails world, oh, I think it takes more damage now, but it also deals more damage, so... Anyway, but, uh, kind of like I was saying earlier, though, the reason I did the extra mining is because I was, uh, watching a stream, and I did get a chance to record the clip after I died, but, you know, I just wanted to kind of chill, mine, and just play the game, and that's kind of what this Tails world is a bit more. I mean, I did that in the original Let's Play as well. Like, off-camera, I do a lot of stuff like that. But in this world, I can do it a little more freely, I guess, because I'm not as obligated to record every little thing. Because I already did a Let's Play where I did that. Or, you know, it's not a Let's Play, it's a Tales series. I don't know, I kind of might be rambling a bit as I fight this boss, and ow. Whew. Woohoo! And Crimtain! I couldn't remember exactly why we'd fight these bosses so much. I think it was because they did drop a good bit of ore, and also because that's what you're supposed to do. Like, I honestly don't think there's anything stopping me from, like, going right for the Wall of Flesh right now. I also feel like I could just completely skip Skeletron, but I think it's the gear you get there that makes it worthwhile. Kind of like you fight this guy so you can get that Crim Tame and that sort of stuff. I don't think there's actually, like, a hard limit, though, or anything that blocking. But, yeah. Oh, and Crimson Seas, I'll put them in there. And I would like to swap back uh, my health potions. Probably should keep them in there in case I need it. But, yeah, anyway, like I was saying, though, this isn't meant to be a Let's Play. I'm not going to show every single little thing. But since that was the first time finding the boss, I thought it was notable enough. But I, there will be times where there might be a good bit of progress off camera. But I'm just wanting to, like, chill and play off camera and, you know, explore around. And, I mean, I kind of did that in the original Let's Play too, though, so it shouldn't be that out of place. Anyway, I'm not sure what I'm going to get up to now, but I feel like it still might be a little early to end the episode. So I'm going to wait and see if anything else happens, and there'll be a clip if there is. So following the boss, I decided I wanted to do a little exploring about. So I ended up uh, running from the base all the way over here, and around halfway through, I remember to start looking for enchanted sword shrines, and as I got here. There was something that looked a little suspicious, but I ended up leading to the path down, and here is... I think it's the first time I found one on this world. Now, I think there's a chance it won't give anything. There's a chance it will give the enchanted sword, and the chance it's gonna give the really rare sword, and that was a dud. Well, I'm gonna keep exploring around. Oh, also, I found the chest with the uh, eye glitch that increases movement speed, which is useful for running around. I remember that was really hard to get in the first world, though, and I think it might be used for some upgrades, so that's neat. Well, I was on my way back from the ocean, because I realized I needed to bring water breathing potions if I wanted any chance of getting the chest out there, and, uh, yeah, I stumbled upon another enchanted sword shrine. It's also night now, and I've been accosted by mobs as I was trying to record this, so I can't tell if this is another fake. It's underwater, so it's harder to see. Oh, that was actually an enchanted sword. Neat. So I also did look into it, and I think there are a total of... Oh, wow, that's actually pretty strong. <laughs> I forgot how strong this thing was. So, I mean, I did le get it legit, so I could use that as my weapon now. I'm not sure what I want to do with that yet. But I did I look into it, and apparently, in a large world, which I think this is, there are a total of four shrines, so I... I would assume it's two per side, but I would love to try and see if I can find the other shrines, because I really would love to get that really insane super sword you can get. It's, it's a, I think, a 1 in 10 chance from a not fake shrine, so we'll see. Well, uh, that was a little unexpected, so I came to the other side of the world here, trying to find the sword shrine. Had no luck, dug under this lake, and what do you know, a sword shrine, and another enchanted sword. Uh, yeah, just an average enchanted sword. And I made it back to the base, but unfortunately I didn't find the final Enchanted Sword Shrine, so hopefully it's still out there somewhere where we might still have a chance at that really rare sword I can't remember the name of, or Ark something. Anyway, also as you see here I was preparing to uh, build some more uh, NPC housing, but before I end off this episode, I want to compare swords. So this is the Mandible Blade, and then this is the Bone Sword, and it just remembered while testing this, 
Not all swords are auto swing, but this does have a much wider swing. While this is kind of rapid, like I can't spam this nearly as fast as this one. But the enchanted sword here, it's auto swing and it shoots bolts. So um, I think I am gonna hold off on the enchanted sword for now because it's 24 damage with auto swing and firing magic beams. But I do think I will be using the manual blade and the bone sword a little bit now because that one's auto swing, this one's larger. So I think they both have their uses. So I don't know, I'm gonna play around with both of those probably for the next episode or at least into the next episode. And then we'll switch over to the enchanted sword once I feel I'm ready for it. So I'm gonna leave that down here in this chest. But uh, yeah, I think that's where I'm gonna end off this episode. It was a little uh, recap heavy at the start, but the last few clips are kind of what I want this series to be a bit more like. So hopefully we can ease a bit more into that style from here on out. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Until next time, goodbye.